Um, welcome, welcome to our talk, Becoming OpenStack Developer While Outreaching. This talk is going to be presented by all the participants. Yeah. Uh, I'm Aya Yauntava, and I will par participate as an intern. Hi, my name is Richard Pioso. I'm an industry engineer. Uh, my name is Dmitry Tansur. I'm an OpenStack developer and outreach mentor. My name is Ilya Itangov. I am uh, also OpenStack developer and also a commenter in this uh, internship. In this talk, we're going to tell you about the outreach program, what is it all about, and why we decided to participate in it. Excuse me? They, but can, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, so we're going to tell you about the outreach program and why you decided to participate in it. We're going to uh, share our experiences and lessons learned, and uh, finally we will talk aloud why or think aloud why this program can or may or may not be good for you. Much like in medieval European guild, uh, trade guilds, as well as probably today's science, the software engineering profession seems to benefit from some sort of apprenticeship before one can fully attain the professional fluency. Other than that, Red Hat builds its business on open source and therefore it's one of the strategic goals of Red Hat to, to help building, promoting uh, open source and, uh, and growing open source engineers. Uh, one of the, or maybe the main focus of outreach program is to uh, promote diversity. Right, and promoting diversity is a core value of OpenStack Dell EMC, and Red Hat's cultures. <clears throat> not, only does it, um, not only is it the right thing to do, it also produces superior software and business results. On top of that, we are open source engineers ourselves, and this is in our direct interest to promote and grow the culture we enjoy and being part of. So what, what is OpenStack? Uh, OpenStack is a large, well-established, and highly collaborative open source um, software engineering project. At OpenStack, uh, we, we value uh, quality engineering practices, <clears throat> mutual respect, and continuous learning. The goal of the OpenStack project is to produce free and open cloud management, and infrastructure software. The first reference on the slide um, provides a bit of OpenStack history. And the second, uh, second reference uh, defines the OpenStack way, which is its four opens. Open design, open development, open, um, open source, and <laughs> open community. Uh, if we look at Stackalytics, which is the bottom reference, you can go ahead and obtain um, interesting statistics about the current development cycle, which is named Stein. Outreach is a project running under the uh, Software Freedom Conservancy organization. The idea behind Outreach is that it bring, brings together the open source projects that seek contributors, the mentors, and the interns to build free software. Uh, the focus of outreach is to promote, ensure, and help out groups of people typically underrepresented in the industry. The way how outreach works is that, they, that, uh, that um, the interns get onboarded of, of a typically large and well-established open source project and 
start working on some feature or on some part of it. Each intern typically gets a mentor that is a person experienced in, in this software and in this community, sometimes more than one. And this is a paid internship, therefore the, the intern has the ability to focus on this work. Um, there are many reasons why to become an uh, outreach intern. Uh, for those who have little or no experience, uh, uh, it's a chance to try out different uh, parts of IT related fields like programming, documentation, design, and to see if they are a good uh, fit for that. Um, uh, also for those who have uh, some little experience, uh, uh, it's a way how they can start contributing to free and open source uh, software. Uh, that they have tried before uh, for variety reasons and uh, all of them can uh, uh, learn and work with uh, people from all around the world and uh, in the projects that are not available locally. And uh, finally, it also can help uh, to get a job. Uh, it can help to build a, a digital portfolio that can be shared with prospective employers, which is not always possible when working for other companies that cannot share their uh, work with the outside world. So, why would you become a mentor in outreach? Well, first of all, can, to contribute back to the communities that helped you grow, uh, grow initially. Because community is really about contributing, and contributing not only the code, but also helping the community grow, and helping grow in a healthy way. And mentoring new members is an essential part of a growth, and mentoring a diverse community is essentially part of its health. It also helps you personally to grow professionally and personally because you learn things better when you explain them. And working with newcomers helps you uh, looking at your project with, uh, from completely new angles, seeing what is hard, what is easy, what is complex, what is straightforward. Uh, and of course, you get more people to work on your project. It's always a benefit. Uh, how it all began, uh, a little uh, about me. So I'm a software engineering and I have experience building enterprise information systems in C-sharp and Java, but I always use the um, uh, free and op open source software for my personal needs. And uh, when I decided to apply for uh, Outreach, I had to decide how to select the project. And uh, uh, so I decided to try something new, something that I haven't done before, but uh, it had to be in a familiar programming language. Uh, because many projects required some proficiency in the tools used. So for me, the best chances were with Python. And another criterion was we, to have mentors in the same or similar time zone. So, uh, so that I don't, if I get stuck, I don't have to wait for way too long when they come online. But this was like nice to have. And if I couldn't find a matching project matching all my criteria, I would drop this. Um, then. Uh, OpenStack project matched all my criteria and I started applying. Uh, I had some issues with my initial ticket, like the long story short is that I didn't, uh, in the final submission there was no code uh, submitted, it was just documentation updates, so I wasn't able to really show my programming skills. Uh, another different thing we, when applying was transparency in seeing that there are other people supplying. So I was able to see how many there are, how they are doing, but generally I decided not to pay attention to that, but focus on my application. And um, speaking about successes, apart from me being accepted, uh, as it was still good that despite my challenges with the initial ticket, uh, there was a dedicated uh, list of tickets for outreach applicants uh, that they could start using. So a few words about OpenStack itself. Um, it's not an easy project to, con uh, to contribute to. It's huge. It uh, has a lot of code and a lot of projects uh, comprise OpenStack and they all interact in non-trivial ways. The development workflow takes time and effort to learn, um, and of course you cannot, you, it's hard to, you just near, completely impossible to run a pet stack at home, for example, on your laptop. And on the social side of things, uh, as it always is with big projects, the core team is overwhelmed, they, uh, they have their own priorities, don't always have time for reviewing your patches, so code reviews can be really slow, days, weeks, months, and 
feedback. Uh, uh, there are always differences in uh, the way f feedback is given or received. Some people are more polite, some people are more direct, some are way too direct. Some people are just burned down and they uh, ca cannot uh, express themselves very clearly. And particularly newcomers are prone to taking this feedback personally. Uh, so this, which also takes uh, some work uh, to come over. The outreach program rules is that every cycle starts with a so-called application period. During the application period, the prospective interns are supposed to work on a project of their choice, on a, on a ticket, I would say, of their choice, uh, to prove themselves and to get the feeling of, of the work they are they are signing up for. Uh, mentors are supposed to provide provide the interns with those test projects. Uh, af after the test project project is done, the men it is in the power of mentors to rank the participants and uh, pass the outcome to the organizers for for the formalities and budgeting and things. Uh, with OpenStack, it was it, it apparent, apparently it was difficult to find this isolated, non well, more, more or less trivial task tasks to to offer to interns. But um, other than that, it's hard to uh, fit the development workflow within the application period with OpenStack because of long reviews and um, all these um, social things. Uh, it's also important to uh, and, and, and hard to to make sure that the work you're proposing to do uh, is aligned with the community community upstream community goals because if it's not then it won't attract any attention from for the reviews next slide please yeah so as mentioned the uh, code reviews uh, in open source projects are uh, very demanding and uh, they question every single bit so uh, the way I handled, uh, first of all, I didn't take it personally. I remembered that I am not my code and uh, uh, reminded that uh, myself regularly. Uh, but I shouldn't go to the other extreme. I still need to take responsibility for the code I have written. I still need to engage uh, with the feedback and uh, work with the team to make the code the best as it can be. Another thing that helps is, uh, is to recognize that uh, code reviews are an essential part of programming. Uh, when I'm uh, working on code reviews, I'm still being productive. And it's not like uh, the only productive time is when I'm uh, actively writing a new code. And uh, the last thing about code reviews is it was a great chance uh, to learn many new things that uh, otherwise wouldn't come up. And even if uh, the, <coughs> the things I learned didn't end up in the final submission, uh, they still can be handy in the future. Uh, the next thing uh, about uh, learning new things, as the domain was very new to me, was asking questions, and I needed to find uh, the balance when I'm asking questions too soon and when I'm uh, trying to figure out my, it myself for too long. Um, if I spend too much on the questions, then I'm uh, wasting too much time. Uh, and the last thing is uh, working from home remotely, as outreach is a remote uh, internship, it's an uh, important part of that, and uh, people need to be prepared for that. Um, it helps uh, that, um, <coughs> excuse me, that person is uh, a self-starter, and it also goes together with motivation, why, why you are working on the project, are you excited about it, and, uh, and that's why it's very, very important to choose the right pro project at the very beginning. And also it helps if there's a dedicated place to work, a room or a corner room, uh, local library, and uh, still working remotely, communication is very important, so regular uh, conference calls uh, help, helped a lot as well. So I'd like to present a case study. Um, industry is heavily involved in OpenStack and influential in standardization efforts. Uh, the standards body in this story is the Distributed Management Task Force, the DMTF. Uh, which creates open standards for managing IT infrastructure. One of its newer and evolving standards is Redfish, uh, a RESTful API for simply and securely managing uh, converged hybrid IT in the software-defined data center. 
the DMTF Redfish form, which uh, performs the standards technical um, work, was interested in promoting Redfish in the open source community. Separately and in parallel, um, OpenStack's ironic project was implementing support for Redfish uh, to provision bare metal uh, servers. Its developers, uh, including Aya, um, were facing challenges and found the standard specifications and related documentations, uh, documentation um, not always ideal. So for example, there was confusing or lacking detail, you know, go figure. Um, and the industry vendors, uh, including Dell EMC, uh, are contributing to both Redfish and Ironic. Um, they introduced the DMTF Redfish Forum uh, to I and, and the Ironic leaders to one another and established a collaboration um, among all three communities. Um, in the trenches writing the code was Aya, um, and like many um, young engineers, um, she may have felt hesitant to reach out to the technical experts, those that had authored the Redfish uh, standard. Um, how, how they were working, but now, now as a result of this co collaboration, they were working alongside her um, towards a, a shared goal. Aya's experience has been fed back to the Redfish um, forum uh, about what help to clarify and, and improve the technicalities of the standard. Um, also, what helps set up the ties um, between the three different communities and, and she with them. Um, and also, um, it's taught, and what taught Aya um, how to negotiate um, intricate and complicated technical issues um, with, with the community and with fellow engineers. Uh, through Aya's successful internship, uh, in three communities, industry, a standards body, and an open source community, um, tore down silos together and jointly furthered uh, one another's goals. So a few helpful tips uh, how to be a better member, mentor. Uh, first, keep your intern always busy, always challenged, uh, always keep in touch with your intern. Uh, Make sure they never get stuck, especially for a long time, no longer than one night. Uh, have, them, uh, have them keep focusing, uh, hope focused even uh, in case of, for example, slow reviews, uh, when it's very easy to lose motivation and to lose focus. Uh, have them uh, do their own planning, uh, encourage uh, small steps and recognize small successes and make sure they recognize their small achievements. Um, another important thing, help them uh, network with the upstream community, introduce to them to other community members, introduce to the team leader, uh, point to a few contributors that can help them uh, as well. Make, them make the interns involved in code reviews of other patches. It's a great way to overcome um, the fear of feedback and of course to learn the project itself. As a mentor, you have to understand the different psychological settings uh, help the interns overcome the biases, help yourself, uh, make sure you're not biased, uh, help grow this unbiased setting in the community. Uh, it's helpful to see yourself, you and your intern as colleagues or co-researchers rather than some master or apprentice set up, because in the end it has to be fun. We think that um, when, when, we, when we deal with the prospective interns, it, it seems then that when the intern is uh, genuinely interested in, in the technology, not, not just as a prospective work, uh, but just for the sake of it, it's a good sign. Another, another good sign is that when they come prepared and well understood, well understanding the project they are signing up for and why that, that project might, might be a good match for them, and finally, one can't be too, sen too, too essential about the, the way how open source community works, because as uh, Dmitry mentioned, some feedback, some uh, code review can be harsh. The code can be abandoned or reshaped in any possible way. And therefore, it's, it's, it's good when the intern is, is prepared for such kind of development. So uh, I'd like to encourage you to come join us 
Um, we've had experience with, uh, with the internships and we found them uh, to be mutually beneficial and useful. Um, if you're someone um, uh, who's uh, new to the field and intrigued by getting involved in a respectful um, open source community, please join us. Um, if you're part of the community and interested in, interested in building the team and getting more helping hands involved, please join us. Um, if you're a uh, vendor or involved in a standards body, um, you can go ahead and have your products and standards specifications um, verified. Um, so please join us. And there are a couple of references up there. The first one is um, refers to outreachy um, communities or communities that have been involved in, in outreachy. Um, and you can go ahead and find those communities if you're interested in joining us. And you're also encouraged um, to go ahead and propose um, the, the addition of a new community to the outreach and internship program. And the second reference for OpenStack um, lists, um, or basically describes OpenStack's specific involvement in outreach. -y. So please, come join us. If anyone has any questions, uh, we're, we're, we do. I had the opportunity to work with uh, Intel, and they were sponsoring together with, with us, with Viteria, uh, an analysis of the gender diversity in OpenStack. So one of the results we had, and we were analyzing all of the outreach in terms, was that if someone is mentored, the time they remain contributing to the community, <laughs> So it seems that if someone is mental, it will remain for a longer time. So we are talking around 18 months in, in average or in media, I don't remember the number, compared to the usual average of the community. And this, these are great numbers. Of course, we are talking about different populations because in, in average, they were like 40 people, and we are talking about thousands of developers. Right. You know, so uh, we need some scientific approach to this. But those are the first numbers, and those were quite interesting here. And the question I have for you is... Can I just interrupt you if you have any questions? We are all the time, so... Yes, a good question. Sorry, we are... Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Thank you. Schedule is kind of busy, so... It's okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation.